School curriculum in the U.S. is continuing to shift. The main focus is in STEM, you know, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, barely leaving room for the fine arts education. The Trump administration is proposing to slash the education budget even more. These cuts will affect teachers' pay and after-school programs. These cuts will reduce services and programs to those much-needed schools in areas serving low-income families. The fine arts can be seen as a luxury, an extracurricular activity. But a study conducted by the National Endowment of Arts says that low-income high school students who earn few or no art credits were five times as likely not to graduate from high school than low-income students with active participation in the arts and earned significant arts credits. It's no secret, we're losing the arts, and that means we are losing an entire generation. Stay with us as we discuss Reviving the Lost Arts. I'm your host, Robin Young, and this is In Contact. Be informed. We gotta know what's going on in our community. Be so together we can make a change. You and me. Be informed. Yeah. Be in contact. Our first guest started playing the double bass and piano at an early age. As a teen, she was accepted into the Atlanta Symphony Orchestra talent development program, which propelled her musical career. She is currently a PhD student of ethnomusicology and has taught classes at the University of Chicago. Please welcome Talia Stokes. Talia, thank you so much for joining us on In Contact today. How are you? I'm well. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. So tell me a little bit about your upbringing and your travels throughout the world. Sure. Um, so I was born in Minot, North Dakota, okay. on the Air Force Base. And I lived there for about six months after I was born. And then uh, my family picked up and were uh, located to Guam. Okay. And we lived there for three years, then Germany for three years, New Mexico for a year, and then moving to Atlanta uh, when my mom got out of active duty in the military and went into the reserves. Um, and I spent most of my childhood through uh, high school graduation here in Atlanta. So tell me about how you developed a love for these various countries. I know you traveled um, throughout the world. Tell me a little bit about uh, the culture and how you developed a love for music. Oh, sure. Um, in terms of the countries that I visited, such as Guam or Germany, um, you know, I was a little kid, so I don't really remember much. Mm -hmm. um, but even with that, and studies have shown that this is this is actually the case. When kids are exposed to various different kinds of cultures or environments, even as small children, they develop in a much different way. Mm -hmm. um, their worldview is expanded. Um, and so growing up, I became very interested in cultures that were foreign to me. Um, I, particularly Asian, Asian, various Asian cultures, um, I started watching anime when I was a little kid. Um, I still watch anime to this day. Um, I started taking Taekwondo, which is a Korean martial art, um, when I was about 12. And I stuck with it and got my black belt when I graduated high school. Um, and I took my first trip to China uh, when I was 16, uh, while I was participating in the Metropolitan Youth Symphony Orchestra. Um, now. I should back up a little bit and explain how I got into that. Absolutely. Um, I started playing in orchestra when I was 12. Um, in sixth grade, my best friend had joined the orchestra at our middle school, and she came into the class with her violin and was showing off, saying, oh, well, look what I can do. And I, you know, I was a little kid, so I'm thinking, well, I'm not really doing anything interesting. Maybe I'll try and try or join the orchestra next year. So in seventh grade, uh, I joined the orchestra and they gave us a choice of what instruments to play. And because I have a sensitivity to high pitched sounds, I already knew that I didn't want to play violin or viola, so my choices were cello or bass. And the orchestra conductor at the time had made a little caveat saying, by the way, we need some bass players. And if you play bass, you don't have to take your instrument home with you because it's too big right. to put on the bus. <laughs> that's fantastic. Right? And so it's like, that sounds like a good deal to me. So that's how I 
ended up choosing playing the bass, but I stuck with it mm -hmm. after, uh, even through middle school and through high school and even to today. So you attended a performing arts high school. Can you talk about how that experience prepared you for um, playing in an orchestra? Yes. So my high school was DeKalb School of the Arts okay. here. Uh, it was located previously on North Druid Hills Road mm -hmm. and now it's in Avondale Estates. Mm -hmm. um, you had to audition to get into the school um, in some kind of area, be it music or literature or art. Um, and you had to maintain a high, uh, excuse me, a high academic standard. You had to maintain high level of grades. Uh, so being at DSA, you had to maintain your artistic integrity and also your academic integrity. Those things go hand in hand. And I think there's a misconception in the United States that the arts and like your traditional subjects um, extending into the STEM fields are incompatible mm -hmm. when in fact they are melded together. You can't have one without the other and it's all around us in the world. Um, but suffice it to say, the amount of work that I did to maintain my um, playing level, so to speak, and to maintain my grades uh, instilled a very strong worth et uh, work ethic in me, which propelled me into college and, and then into graduate school and now into a PhD program. Um, so all of those years ago, choosing to play bass because my friend started playing uh, violin and going to and performing arts high school and having that rigorous, uh, strenuous, but good for me kind mm -hmm. of academic environment um, has made me the kind of person that I am today. Absolutely, and it speaks to really getting some of that real world experience, having that discipline and being able to you know, focus on an instrument as well as academia. Yes. So tell me, you play the double bass. Yes. <laughs> Can you talk to me a little bit about um, you know, playing the double bass in a predominantly um, Caucasian or Asian industry? It seems to be rare. Could you share your insight about that? Yeah, so yeah, it is rare. Um, oftentimes I'm either the only black person in the entire orchestra or the only black bass player. Um, and not to put too fine of a point on it, but uh, the orchestra world is very, very white and Asian and also very male. So that I'm black female playing bass in a white male dominated um, culture it's almost like visiting a different country, so to speak. It, there's just different ways of being, different ways of engaging with people. And this, you know, you can experience this in pretty much any kind of field that you're going into where you're going into a culture that's uh, different than yours or different than what you're ex used to experiencing at home. Um, but doing so, I guess in a way prepared me for the kinds of things that I'm doing now, uh, music academically, um, because I am now going to actual different countries and actually engaging in very, very different cultures mm -hmm. while also still having music as the common grounding for the interactions that I have with different people. So the fine arts, I mean, this is really what we're talking about. Can you talk to me about um, the necessity of having it in um, the local school systems and why that's important? And it seems to be that, you know, um, some of those, that funding is being cut. But can you talk about the importance of having fine arts in um, the local school environment? Yes, and I mentioned this um, before in terms of how I feel that the U.S. has a misconception about um, what the arts actually represent. Either people think that it's for the super elite or it's just a hobby, mm -hmm. right? But the arts impact every single aspect of our lives. Most of us adults, we go to work, we have a nine to five job, and then we go home. What do you do when you go home? You probably listen to music, you probably watch TV, you probably engage in some uh, paintings or what have you. Um, this, what we're doing right now, Absolutely. is an art. Absolutely. Uh, filmmaking, set design, um, um, excuse me, makeup artistry, hair. Uh, all of that. All of that. 
all of that is arts. So the importance of having the arts in schools, it puts an emphasis on uh, creating very well-rounded, well-developed children through uh, schooling up into adulthood. If we place all of our focus on just the STEM fields, um, science, technology, engineering, math, and, uh, and or like common core subjects mm -hmm. like reading and reading comprehension, it's not to say that there's anything wrong with Absolutely. doing that, but it's kind of like going to the gym and only working your arms mm -hmm. and neglecting your legs entirely for mm -hmm. 18 years. What do you think is going to happen? You're not right. going to have a very healthy body. Right. And when you put kids in an environment where they're not exposed to the arts and they're not encouraged to participate in the, in the arts, they're not going to have a fully rounded, well-developed uh, sense of being in the world. Can you talk about um, how the fine arts spark creativity? You know, I feel like um, as a child, I was involved in the arts, in drama, um, classical music lessons. I took piano for years, violin for years. Then I switched over to taking organ lessons for the gospel um, arena. And so having the arts really did teach me methodologies as well as discipline with practicing. Mm -hmm. But there, you know, the scope of the fine arts, like you were saying, is is broad. Can you talk about how it can really spark creativity in young children and how that can follow them throughout adulthood? Well, being art is about creation, right? You are creating something. You're creating something visually. Mm -hmm. You're creating something sonically. You're creating stories out of nowhere to put on the big screen or the small screen right. in your home. Um, these things absolutely follow you. Um, even if you're not some, doing something professionally in the arts, like you're not a professional singer or mm -hmm. actress or any of this kind of thing, you're still, throughout your day to day, encountering real world problems and needing to think outside of the box, so to speak. Think creatively about how to solve your problems or navigate in the real world. And having exposure to the arts allows you to develop those kinds of skills mm -hmm. and apply them to other aspects yes. of your life. Um, I will say uh, that, for example, an alumni of my uh, high school is Donald Glover, also known as Childish Gambino, mm -hmm. who just recently put out Absolutely. this. Absolutely, he's you know, all over all social over, media. Right. Um, or, for example, uh, Black Panther was mm -hmm. shot here, here in Atlanta. Think about all of the artistic and creative development that had to go into producing a film of that magnitude. Um, the storyline, the costume design, the kind of thought and imagination of what a sort of futuristic but still present world would look like in a hidden secret African country. Mm -hmm. um, thinking about these kinds of things definitely follow you as you continue on in your life from early age all the way up into late adulthood. That, that is so true. So what can we do to continue to encourage the arts and keeping it alive for the current generation as well as the next generation? What are some tips, tricks, things that we can probably incorporate in our daily life to really continue to support the arts on a greater level? Definitely seek out local artists, be they dancers or musicians or singers or photographers or uh, painters or what have you. Seek out these local communities. They're everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, they're not as big name and famous as the folks you will see on TV or in movies, but they are still there. Yes. And you think about it, the people who are on TV and in movies were small name people mm -hmm. at some point in time. Find these local artists, engage with them. Even if you don't know anything about what they're doing, just go there and see what everything's about and try and get a sense of the kinds of messages that they're putting forth in their uh, creative activities. Thalia, thank you so much for joining us today on the couch on In Contact. Thank you for being here. Thank you, thank you for having me.